Oh, that's just fantastic lighting. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's just an intro. That and I've got a good excuse. Folks, uh, of course, it's me, Scott. The broken part of Meet Us in the Man Cave. When I say broken, yes, I, uh, well, I broke my big toe. It was about this time last week where my dumb ass, laying in this couch, probably in this position, decided to roll over and kick his foot on a cast iron table that's, well, I'm sure you could see it. I don't know. The laptop's it. It's, 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 it's. anyways, uh, I wanted to do uh, an intro on this particular podcast because it's kind of like a special edition, not because I broke my toe. It's more or less a, a podcast that Chris is, is pretty excited about. And I feel like I at least owe him an explanation, even though he knows exactly what's going on here. He's not pushing me to get this out, but I figure, you know, since I'm taking the doctor's orders and pretty much staying horizontal, keeping my foot up, uh, I might as well go ahead and try taking advantage of, that is, is Riverside's editing program. Now, I'm sure if you've watched Chris and I before enough in the past, you've heard us mention a software program called Riverside.fm. It is a wonderful platform that you yourself, if you choose to do a podcast, video and audio, it's excellent. It's more of a professional service that you can use because it, you can record your video and your audio and it goes to a cloud system from Riverside, which all is adapted into, let's put it this way, you could download it on your own computer, use your own editing programs, like I use Final Cut Pro, in raw footage when it comes to video and audio. The quality is just great, up to, you know, 4K. And it's just something that, uh, well, Chris and I have been using about a year. And if you're like me, if you've got a tool that you enjoy, or if you have tools that are in your toolbox, and occasionally you get around to wanting to find out what more and more of these certain tools, what advantages do you have of using them or owning them? Well, with Riverside, I finally decided, you know what? Let me go ahead and take advantage of their editing uh, system. Granted, it's not as advanced as like say Final Cut or Premiere Pro, but it's a great tool, an editing software program that you could use for someone who's advanced like myself or someone who's just not familiar with editing videos at all. Let's just put it this way. If you could read, you can pretty much cut out the words or paragraphs or sentence, whatever it is, very easy to use. Just cut that out and boom, it takes that part of the video out. You could even correct the spelling if you're going to use captions, which I decided to use in this particular podcast that you're about to see. Hopefully I didn't miss a few words that were misspelled, but you know what? Maybe you'll get a good laugh out of it. But yeah, I wanted to do this for Chris because I know he's pretty excited about it, even though he is not wanting me to rush to edit this because Guys, when I'm editing podcasts or any other videos in the past, I'm very strict, I'm very particular, I'm very anal, and I'm going to be sitting, you know, on a computer desk chair for hours editing videos, and I just, well, I'm in no position to be sitting down for the longest time, having blood rush to my foot, and then, of course, it'll just, you know what, I think you get the idea. So I figured I owed it to all of our viewers out there explaining why this podcast may look a little different. Now, if you're just someone who listens to it, it probably won't make that big of a deal at all. So that's a great thing. That, and um, who knows? Maybe I'll take advantage of using, you know, Riverside.fm's uh, editing program a little bit more because it only took me about 10 minutes compared to hours. You know, it's a lesson to learn. Stop being so picky, Scott. It's not like, well, you know what? Just help a broken man feel good about himself. And maybe subscribe, like, share on, of course, YouTube. You can follow us on Rumble. And, of course, download, stream, whatever, on your favorite podcasting app. And, of course, you know, if you're fancying a dad hat, you know what to do. All that information on how to get this, where you can find us, is in the description box down below. And I want to shut the hell up because now my right arm is getting too tired of holding this phone. So, hopefully, you enjoy this special edition an early release of a podcast. And if you're a big fan of hip hop and rap, well, I'm sure you're truly going to enjoy it. And maybe you've learned something from Chris in this particular podcast. 
me, the only thing I can share with you is don't fall asleep on a couch that you hate, especially when it's close to a coffee table made out of cast iron. You might, well, enough said. Enjoy. Warning, the following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers and or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. And Dozer, I'm going to clap to three, so don't freak out. Uh, <laughs> what a great way. Folks, you're going to want to stick around to this uh, particular podcast because we've got a lot of interesting stuff to share with you. Sorry, was, I was listening to Drake just now. So I was he was listening ass. to Drake. Chris, I don't know if you heard about this or not. Was there a shark scene removed from the original Halloween film? And what is it the appropriate age to tell the highway it's been adopted? Stick around. You're going to want to watch this podcast. It's going to get quite juicy. happened there what did you do i wanted to come up with the teaser <laughs> so all uh, that stuff it will be you know okay chris has got a lot of serious stuff to talk about i'm going to jump in occasionally with uh, my thoughts my feelings or my world but before we do that chris i need to help medicate my toe with what the fuck are you drinking the fuck you drinking mm. are you going first um tell you what let me adjust my camera you already got something right before we started recording if you wouldn't that not to mention you purchased something for the both of us so if you wouldn't mind going first why it get prepared? Is, it is nice and frosty let me clear some of this frost off real fast what i had some glasses made for us this is a wheat IPA glass, and I'm not sure if it's going to pick it up too well, but yes, yes, folks, that would be a meet us in the man cave etched beer glass. Came out really well. I'm real happy with it, and uh, very interesting design. It's kind of egg shaped. I don't know how you describe it. Tell you what, let me grab another glass. Now that I think about what it reminds me of, here's a traditional um, beer. Well, it's Guinness, but uh, see the shape here? This is, we've had, we're used to seeing that shape, especially if you're going to have a pint at a pub, Guinness. Right. And, uh, this has got more, like you said, an egg, an hourglass. So I love it. It's different. It is, you know, it is different, which I always enjoy something that's different. And I know that glare right now. The, I'm trying to do mine just right with the no, lighting. No, it's real hard, right? But it's okay. I could see it. You could see yours. And thank you once again. Now I have a coffee mug, which the more I think <laughs> about it, I like the logo being outward. I don't know why I just do. But this is better. Oh, yeah. Because it's supposed to be serving. What the fuck are you drinking, Chris? So, uh, I got a two-parter, actually. Um this is by Three Floyds. Uh, my mother actually bought me this. She's supporting my alcohol drinking, which is always nice. Right in time for Mother's Day. Excellent job, Jennifer. Man, I don't know how to say this, though. Is it? Wow. Three, three Floyds. Yeah, Three Floyds. Three, <laughs> three Floyds is the company. Um, I can't tell if that's a C or a... You know what? I'm... <laughs> It's either Gimmafan or maybe it's Chimerian. I'm going to go with Chimerian. Chimerian Sabretooth Berserker. Which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> I, you know, we folks, we're going to get into music big time on this particular podcast. As soon as you said that, for some reason, I started thinking Queen Bohemian Rhapsody. For some... Scalamouche, I mean, Scalamouche. <laughs> 
I can't even read it. I can't even tell. I wish you could see the font that's on this thing. But anyways, it's a double India pale ale, which is an IPA, of course. And uh, 9% by volume. Mm. I don't, that's a big boy. All it says on it is it's not normal. <laughs> but while you're pouring, I'm changing the, the beer that I'm going to have on this particular podcast. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Ooh, that looks good in that glass. I, let, me, let me do the product placement correctly here. It does. Oh, damn, you can't see it. Damn it. It does. It, it, the, the beer, the volume, everything about it, it looks like Chris looks like a professional Ooh. taster. It makes you look seriously professional. She is heavy. While we do that, I, I got a, uh, a follow up here. Let me hang on one second here. I'm not, uh -oh. you know, you know, I'm real big on, uh, on the Isla scotches. I ended mm -hmm. up finding the Laphroaig Select, which is kind of rare nowadays, I guess. So I ended up finding this in West Virginia. I'm gonna makes sense because you know they only make so much. Whatever in that case, they're only gonna brew uh, so many. That's so that's one of the reasons why sometimes the stuff is expensive. Yeah, wasn't cheap, but I'm real, real. Big fan of Lefroy right now, man. I didn't think I was going to be considering, uh, you know, my asthma and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. pretty much as soon as I smell smoke, I'm off of it. But yeah, the smoke peat that they do in these Isla whiskeys is, I'm, I'm in love with it. Maybe mm. a little bit more ice. I got some uh, brandy snifters I need to give to you. Folks, you heard that here. You heard that first. I got some brandy snifters I need to bring over to Chris because I have them kind of stocked up, and all they're going to do is collect dust here, and that'd be perfect for because he he likes to sip on his his scotch whiskeys where it's neat, otherwise warm, and if he puts that in the palm of his hand as if it was a brandy, he can enjoy it with some sophistication and some style, and fuck it, <laughs> tastes really good too at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Well. I pretty much knew that was going to be a hit, so that's <laughs> fucking phenomenal. That's that's great. Okay, let's move on to this guy. Here. I, 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 uh, yeah, I'm curious. This is a big glass. It doesn't look like it, but I mean, it's a 23 ouncer. Mm hmm. Yes. There. Thank you, mother. That is very fucking good. Damn. Nothing really to comment on it's just a straight it's a gut check it's right to the it's right to the kisser just straight heavy beer mm. you know in honor of three floyds i was gonna but i'll you know what i'll wait till the next episode all right let's keep the three floyds going i got this in fact i got it cold enough in time it was the last six pack i bought today Three Floyds. This is called Turbo Reaper. The way the art, the way the art, I, I seen this artwork and I was like, this kind of is, well, I don't know if I want to say it now. You know what? Chris and I are going to eventually possibly, not in this particular podcast, but we've talked about album covers and some album covers that really capture our attention. And this reminds me of an album cover that I'm just going to go ahead and share now. Meat Loaf's Bad Out of Hell. Beautiful cover. And I just thought of this. Now, enough of the artwork. Oh, it's it's 7% on the alcohol level scale. Of course, it is an IPA. And being a Floyd Rose, I know they are one of the partners, if I remember correctly, with uh, War Pigs. Oh, awesome. Probably the best beer of 2024 so far. Which is out of Indiana. Munster, Indiana. I always want to say Minster because of Minster up north here. Now, um, real fast, can we just talk about fucking Three Floyds and their fucking marketing department? What are they doing with naming these these fucking beers? I don't know, but the the, the name <laughs> I'm I'm loving the artwork and the name on this alone seven percent. Now let's see. Golly, looks like fucking Conan on the front. 
<laughs> you have what what is the uh this is your standard 12 ounce can so i could have had two of these and they're not a big deal mm, yeah she's a 16 okay chris i think uh, just from smelling this i'm going okay he uh, if, if you remember folks when chris talks about he doesn't particularly like his ipa is all clean he doesn't he likes it unfiltered this doesn't smell like it's filtered very well so there you go Hey. That, sounded, that sounded kind of like I was putting the be, the, it down. No, I'm not. not. Not to me. Not to me. It's got a lot of going on in here. Oh, damn! Wow. It kind of looks. It kind of looks similar, don't they? This has got an orange citrus thing going on here, with a little bit of a. Hmm. This is a it's it's tangy, um, crisp. Ooh, a little crisp. bit, a hint of some cherry to it, just a little bit, or a raspberry. I'm not quite sure. Maybe a summer beer. You know what? I'm gonna have to make sure I save at least a couple in case we never see this fucker again. If you know what I mean. <laughs> It's the going trend, isn't it? In other Anything words, we start liking it fucking goes away. Yep. Yeah. Save a couple at least to take a road trip up to Laura's and say, well, let me know what you think. Because you'll probably never have it again, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so three Floyds are kicking ass right now on this podcast. That's for sure from what it sounds like. Yeah, good job. Good job. Turbo Although, Reaper. Whoever the fuck's naming these, I need to talk to you. I need to. Need to have a little sit down and figure out what the fuck you're smoking. <laughs> Need to tag three Floyds more often in these podcasts, if you know what I mean, Chris. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they would allow us to do a little tour with a little type of video pot. Oh wow, that's just asking way too much right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you guys have been you guys have been watching too much uh, Lord of the Rings. I think time to calm down. <laughs> well, but but. We we were recorded so close to May fourth. Shouldn't it, I? I have May the fourth be with you. Fourth, fourth be with you. Yes. You know what? I'm going to screw this dates up. You know, we've enjoyed our three Floyds. We've enjoyed our. You know, I'm I'm just I'm doing some, just some basic uh, Jameson right here, and uh, actually, you know, it's the the black barrel that I had from the last podcast. I really liked it, so. Oh, this is like not your traditional uh, Lafroy at all. I didn't really talk about it, but mm. you don't get much of the uh, peat smoke with it. It's fucking. Mm. But it's on the palate. I don't understand. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give away too much information where Chris lives, but he's in a location where it's almost a perfect place to start his own brewery out there. <laughs> sounds like an invitation sir yeah. you think we should do it i don't it'll never get mcm going if we go that direction <laughs> <laughs> that's what the upstairs for huh <laughs> i could just hear now uh because i'm always throwing out names but i'll just say there's certain people that we know that would meet be taking a road trip to ohio like so let's check this what this is all about you say you're making masks but i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> wink wink yeah, the advice would be don't make it upstairs because you got to go down after doing a few taste tests. All right. <laughs> oh, Lord. So that's what the fuck we're drinking. Yeah. What the fuck we're drinking. Should we take it to what the fuck are we listening to? You know what? I'm going to hand this over to you, sir. You are very excited about some things that are going on in your music world. And I'm just oh. going to ab lib off of that. So. This is where I get to sit back and try my best to shut the fuck up, and I'll try. <laughs> what the fuck has happened in the last week? I mean, I don't know how many of our listeners listen to, say, Drake or, you know, possibly Kendrick. Um, I don't know how many hip-hop listeners we have actually listening to us talk at the same time. But over the last week, these two have created probably one of the greatest. I think we're in the middle of the greatest hip hop beef slash battle that has ever 
in history that has ever taken place. I mean, these men are systematically like destroying each other one by one. And a uh, controversial topic, but man, I think Kendrick is uh, is just tearing this man apart right now. It's it's so growing up the way I did. I mean, I've always been into hip hop. I mean, I'm sure our our fans. I don't know how well they are aware, but I've talked about, you know, I did b-boying before that. I've always listened to hip hop growing up. I mean, there's hip hop, there's then there's rap. I mean, I feel like we've gotten a lot of rap lately, but we haven't gotten any actual hip hop. If you put hip hop into the battle form, it's essentially, you know, a boxing match. It's two men going at each other and they're landing body shots, they're landing left hooks, you know. I mean, the punch lines and everything they're throwing at it. Some of these Kendrick tracks have been like genius, like diabolical. This man's like, he's a maniac. It's fucking unreal what he's doing with Euphoria and all these other tracks that he's released. I don't, have you been, have you seen any of it, Scott? No, Chris, uh, can I ask a question and then, and I hope that it doesn't go off track. Absolutely. What you're talking about here and I, and I'm, and my knowledge on it is, you know, blank. But I can't help but think of, um, I don't want to use age because, okay, uh, back in the 90s, we had the whole East Coast and West Coast thing, you know, when it came to rap, hip hop. Is it anything similar to that of what's going on? Funny you mentioned because Kendrick is West Coast. He's L.A. Um, he's really Compton, if you want to put it back into, uh, you know logistics but uh straight out of compton yeah yeah. drake is uh drake's canadian we we (laughs) have canadian brothers in the mask hobby so there we go this is true um i okay Uh, tread carefully here because i don't want to hip-hop is a i mean it's we could break it down so many different ways its birthday is 1973 you know, Who's coming out of, again? I'm sorry. Hip hop, just where oh, it came from. Oh, gotcha. Its originalities. I mean, I'm sorry. Know, I thought you were speaking of an. I'm from New York. We know that. So he doesn't have the the exact validity that he's a, you know someone like Kendrick has being from America. So he's played on a couple. He's thrown a couple punchlines at him as far as that's concerned, and they've landed and kind of stung, but. This latest man, they're kind of breaking it down into the family aspect. And a lot of the stuff you're talking about right now, as far as like if you were to take it back to East Coast versus West Coast, I mean, if you listen to Hit 'em Up, Tupac, I mean, that was a scathing track that he put out against Biggie. It's almost to those terms. They're like, they're like right there. I mean, it's, it's bad. They're like, they're, they are at each other's throats. He, he just, I mean, Kendrick released a bar, like a pretty much a bar that kind of invited Drake into the discussion again, because it's always been a, a, a kind of a rivalry between the uh, top three, which the top three right now are considered uh, J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick. And Kendrick pretty much came out in a track called uh, Like That. And he pretty much just said, fuck the big three. It's just big me. And that kind of introduced Drake into it. It introduced Cole into it. J. Cole came back with his whole, uh, he, he came with his diss track and then he, and then he retracted it. He, he went on stage and he said, you know what, I, I apologize. I'm going to delete this. However people want to feel about that is whatever. Drake essentially took it to another level. Drake said, I'm all in. I'm going, I'm going in on this dude right now. So he released his diss track. Kendrick fired back. And then, you know, a little bit of smoke cleared. After that, most recently, Drake released another diss track by the name of Family, um, Family Values. Yeah, Family Values. And Kendrick, within one hour, 
had already released another diss track by the name of uh, Meet the Grams. Meet the Grams was the name of it. And uh, essentially what that's what that's doing is uh, <laughs> Drake's real name, his legal name is uh, is Aubrey Graham. And he's <clears throat> Kendrick has come back and he's addressed letters. He has four verses on the on the track. And he's addressed letters to his son, his mother slash father, his daughter, and then a letter to himself, to Aubrey Drake, personally. And that's the latest that has happened. And, and I swear to God, he he tore that man apart in that. That's probably the worst this track I thought Euphoria was the worst diss track that I had heard. And then he released another one after that called 616 in LA, which has a whole bunch of hidden meanings behind it. But man, this newest one that he released is just bad. They are yeah. full on war. Hold on. Let me see something here real quick. I know 818 is an area code. Hey, Siri. Hmm. What is the 616 area code? Oh. No, that's not what I asked. You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, so, uh, yeah, 616 six, has been broken down into a whole bunch of things. Um, June 16th is the um, Father's Day in Canada, and Drake is known for leaving a couple of his kids. Oh, yeah, uh, it it the, it get, it gets broken down into several different things, and and he's he's just he's dragging this man across the concrete right now. I I do like Kendrick, but you know Drake, he he, he can rap too. I can't take anything away from him. But right now, I feel like these two, like rap and hip hop, have gone through such a dry spell with all these like little rappers coming up i feel like these two within the last week have like revitalized rap and brought back hip-hop to this like it's it's like it's, it's purest form i think i think they're like resetting hip-hop right now that's how like astronomical they what they're doing right now it, it, i think it's phenomenal you know Everybody is going to have their opinion, of course, on shit. They're gonna. Everybody's gonna have their opinion on sliced bread. That's yeah. just how it is. Uh, so I'm sure there's gonna be people out there that are listening to you, that are following, you know, exactly what you what's trending here. And as an outsider or even an insider, people could use well this whole the news that's been going on. I want to say the past month when it comes to Sean Combs. AKA P. Diddy. I'm sorry. I just still want to say anybody that's going to have a name P. Diddy, I'm old school. I just want to say you deserve to be slapped with a nickname like that. Um, yeah. But I just offended what 50 people out there. Um, so that shit stirs the pot. Now this comes along. You, you, you want to, let's face it, people want to separate themselves from his bullshit. That's, that's obvious. Oh yeah. So you're going to have individuals that are just average hitters, uh, average listeners, or just your top twenty or top whatever rap pop, uh, hip hop. They're going to probably blend that together. You know, well, it's it's obvious. It's like going to be not. like this because he's a bad representative. I, I don't know. I just I hope can't not. help but think of that. But because is, what is happening right now is like. <sighs> Is like a Mike Tyson match. It's like a, you know, a. It's it's a heavyweight bout right now. It's it's so entertaining right now. I mean, they're trading trading body body blows just back and forth. It's what hip hop was. It's it's what it, it, hip hop is a sport. It's created to be a sport. It's it's punchlines. It's there's a reason they're called punchlines. 
and punches. You're supposed to be de de defaming the other character. You're supposed to systematically break down the other character. That's who you're battling against. And in, and in all reality too, Chris, it's, it's obviously in the music industry. And one thing like the music industry, history does tend to repeat itself. I've been thinking of what you're saying and I can't help but think about history in the music industry, not just in hip hop and rap, but rock and roll. There's been battles with that shit when I was a little boy. Um, sure. There was issues, even though it doesn't seem like it, but one time there was almost an issue when it came to British rock and, and of course, rock and roll over in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They thought it was going to be in order, but it really wasn't because I'll tell you what, I, from what I understand from what my uncle told me, one of the reasons why I hear people in the U.S. were getting a little upset about British is because people over there, like, say, Led Zeppelin, for an example, or Black Sabbath, they absolutely loved blues here in the united states southern blues they were fascinated with it and for some reason some immature individuals in the rock and roll when it was getting a little bit more hardcore they were getting pissed off at these brits because they said that you're stealing it no they weren't stealing it they were fascinated with it. they loved it they appreciated it thankfully that got cleared or that could have been a big battle which is so ridiculous now i appreciate the passion that these guys are putting into it because the today's industry anybody who's been in the industry music industry they'll tell you you are going to have to be somebody extremely special to make it in this field because they're not making the money like they used to youtube you have to get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of views to even make any money on there if you're obviously a partner with youtube right the shares that individuals get for people streaming is pennies on the dollar compared to what it used to be when people were buying physical this is kind of like going back to where we've talked about for the past the physical media even with hip-hop and rap artists if people are buying their physical media yeah. oh my god <laughs> so here's a, here's what I'm at where I'm at with that. Hip hop was created to be it was essentially like people wanted to take control of the power. It was the whole fact of there was never a, a reporter that was coming out to South Central, you know, Bronx, LA, any of these I remember areas. Was, wasn't it underground? Oh yeah. I mean if you take it back to, you know, the 70s, 1973, whenever you want to go with Africa Bombada and, and Grandmaster Flash. I mean, I've, I've had sit-downs with KRS-One in the heart oh, of God, downtown I... Dayton. I mean, it's been a fascinating topic, but at the heart of hip-hop, what happened was there was no reporters coming down there to tell you who was shot last night, who got robbed last night. There was none of this. They had no way to get their story out to the world. So what it became was, okay... We're going to use these, these break beats. We're going to use these loops. We're going to spin it on a DJ record and we're going to make mm -hmm. it loop over and over. And then we're going, to go, we're going to create bars and we're going to tell our story within those bars. And they were telling their story and it was their outlet. But now we've come to a point in hip hop where things are kind of easier, you know, um, recording is more available. It's it's you easier. Do, you, you, Kids don't have to do go it right through the there. Screen. What's that? You can record right there off of your own computer. Hell, I can. Absolutely, it's I, readily available. I can hook up. I can hook up my amplifier to my computer and write a song right now. It would be scary, but I could. <laughs> so there's not as much. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like hip hop started as a an outlet to get exposure to get their story out. What story do we have to tell anymore? So that's kind of like where I feel like the low point in hip hop has been recently. We've not had anything where where somebody's gotten on gotten on a mic and been like, you know, I have a story to tell. Even I mean, if you take Andre three thousand, uh, they call him, you know, whatever you want to call I know him, you're three, about. three stacks, whoever you want to call him, ha one half of out outcast, whatever the hell you want to call him. He he literally said, "What do I got to rap about?" Everybody wants me to make a rap record 
what do I got to rap about? My life is good right now. I got nothing to rap about. I got no problems. And then you start thinking about it and you're like, half the music that we love came from people's adversity, people's growing up in life and facing problems. That's where half, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say half of the music that we love was created from problems. Yeah. People have oh, problems, yeah, they sit down and they write. There's, that's musicians, right? So Hence that's, 90s I, grudge. I grunge. think that's that was, why yeah. we got... I think that's why we got such a uh, low point in hip hop lately. And all I can say is I am grateful to be alive with these two artists that are creating this much of a entertaining time right now, because I'm fucking loving it. It's fucking great music. Yeah. I'm going to be careful on, because I know sometimes I can start thinking about something and I go off on a different end. Um, cause you know what you're saying there? I mean, you think about all, I don't want to say, you, well, I, you can't help but say like one hit wonders, you know, where they've had some meaningful songs that they wrote and then they, maybe they just, I don't know. They just had, if they wrote that song or let's say they wrote three great songs, maybe their life had changed in that that's three songs and they went out on tour with it. They played other songs in bigger arenas. And like you said, maybe their life had changed and they didn't have that same, you know, oh, life just, changes. Yeah. You mean in general? Yeah, in general. Okay. Um, I mean, could, it could happen to anyone out there, whether it is in rap, country. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Rock, it, it, it can. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, he came out and he was like, what am I going to rap about? Am I going to rap about like cashing in my 401k and changing diapers? Like what, what am I going to rap about? My Why life is good right now. I got no problems. Yeah, I mean, and that you makes have so to... much fucking sense. Now, ironically, as Chris talked to me, as we, we were like, okay, here we, we sit down here in our man caves near our beers. All right. We got our, we, we want to naturally come up with a topic at hand. I spitball some ideas. He spits, but he's really excited, passionate about what he's talking about here. And I'm just like, well, I can't relate to in other words i'm not in the same spin i haven't been listening or reading the same articles or watching or whatever because ironically i'm going back in time because i'm learning to play an instrument more in other words i'm focusing more on learning how to play that guitar than i ever did before so i'm going back to listen to 70s 80s and 90s so when chris was asked me have you heard anything about this no, nope, because right now I got to do the one <laughs> song that you're not allowed to play in a guitar store, Smoke on a Water. So, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm living in yesterday's world. <laughs> and that's why I'm, I'm so like, I love it all. I love all the music. I mean, just give me it. I will take it and I will absorb it. I'm like a sponge with that shit. This thing, I haven't felt like this since, you know. DMX area about about hip hop like it's fucking oh man it's exciting right now these guys if you like analyze their punchlines and what they're throwing at each other and and all the like ways that Kendrick is like strategically just like poking holes in this guy and Drake has been on top of the rap world for probably 15 years now so he's kind of like it's kind of like um I don't know Lack of a better, already. <laughs> not lack of a better um, term. Like it's kind of like Thanos in a in Endgame, Avengers Endgame. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the last you know, decent Drake, Marvel movie. <laughs> Drake's on the top. You know, he he he's like one second from snapping his finger, and then you got Kendrick mm. coming in, and, and I feel like Kendrick is like is like Iron Man right now. He's just running through the ranks right now, and he's just and Kendrick's one of the. He's so fucking good. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm in love with his lyricism and how he writes shit. His double entendres, his triple entendres, like he's just man. You gotta like seriously sit there and pick apart everything he's saying in order to make it make sense in your brain. He's fucking genius. See, it's stuff like this. Anybody who's listening, and I don't care how young or old you are, this is what makes, let's say, a band. Chris is a, let's say, a, more of a lyricist, and he, he he goes down that path, and then 
enjoys the passion and 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 the reasons why the story is being told, whether it's a poem or what. It's, it's really all the it's a, it's it's poetry in a sense. Yes, I go down a path of chasing tones, sounds. I just I've always been that way. That's probably why I fell in love with Edward back when I was a little kid. Why I was really intrigued by all that stuff. It wasn't the words. It was the music. I get so fascinated with. Uh, there's certain bands that produce. It really has a lot to do with producers and engineers too. To, but you know, I won't go down there. But there's just something about it that just makes my the 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 hair on my arms. Like you talk about with DMX, how you're starting. It's bringing back certain memories, like you have with DMX. I'm been listening to Van Halen in ways like I hadn't listened to in a long time because I'm trying to actually learn one song right now and i start listening to certain tracks and it's like i'm going into like daydreaming while i'm driving and i shouldn't do that and man it feels good this is when you know you love music when you get lost in that world and nothing else around you matters <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's hip-hop rap country i'll even say today's pop <laughs> that's how i feel I, like everything me, else it's... like even work everything else has been dumbed down i've just been waiting for these guys to release tracks it's fucking it's absurd like i've not felt i've not been this excited for years it's yeah i hope it i hope it keeps going because all this is doing is showing all those other little rappers that have been getting millions here there and wherever it's showing these little rappers this is how you rap this the is the old school yeah this is how you do it. This is how you land body punches. This is how you do a battle. Nobody's afraid to, I mean, nobody wants to battle anymore. Everybody's afraid to battle. There's no battles. Everybody just wants to get out there and make their money. There's no any yeah. of it anymore. Hip hop is at its core. It is comp like competition. If you're not competing, you don't deserve a fucking award. In my, that that's my thoughts. I don't know how everybody else feels, but. Yes, that that is you. You must have some sort of competition. You must be indirect competition with someone. It's even if you're not someone. Who, I mean, you, if you're a fan of music, you can tell what's going on. Even in that, like I could tell, I could tell what these kids have been doing. They have, in a sense, in fact, it wasn't that long ago. I was laughing my ass off because I seen something. I think it was a uh, Snoop Dogg. He was saying that ain't rap because he was hearing some of these kids. Yeah. It's like he couldn't relate to it because it's it's not you don't yeah, even he know. Said, uh, he said <sighs> they they sound like I don't know if Future started that or met or like Migos started that, but they also like yeah. <laughs> they all follow the same cadence in the same flow and the same staccatos. And, and when did tone same. death? Yes. Yeah, when did when did tone death become a thing for these guys? I don't know. Seriously, it's like they they. You'll hear these, there's been, it, it happens with every culture. Like I want to say in the 2010s or whatever, these pop artists, they would have mm -hmm. their recordings where they would kill their, their choruses where the words, be, uh, a word being repeated. Uh, it could be a word, it could be beer, 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 beer. Uh. And it's like, oh my God, it, it, this just shows you can't come up with anything more creative than that. That's why I love when I see something like this. This is like a this is like a fucking shining beacon to me right now that says that the old ways are not lost. Like this is like saying these two know what it's about and they're fucking going at it right now and showing everybody else. It gives me hope. Well, out, out I of this, I feel like we could get some good some good records it could, if they if they show them how to fucking rap. It could inspire. It's, you know, I said earlier, history tends to repeat itself, and maybe this will bring some culture back to it, and it'll bring back the whole meaning. In other words, it's poetry, folks. That's yes. really what it is. It's poetry. One hundred percent. Bring it back. Bring back. Some, bring back some. I mean, it does. Like I said, I keep on. I feel like I'm going in circles. It's, it's creating something special. It's something powerful creating a song because it is it's a song because it's let's face it it's on a radio so therefore it's a song it's a melody 
have some meaning behind it. Have the share, tell a story. I mean, dear Lord, here you go. Okay, Chris, here you go. Here's your original. I want to say old school rapper, gangster hip hop, Johnny Cash. Oh, man in black. You can't be a man in black. He's a fucking legend. So if you think I'm joking around, Johnny Cash, there, there's some old school roots right there for you. There, there's some poetry right there that you could definitely. Oh man, I was hearing that song. I just heard the uh, uh, the one we, with um. I hear the train coming. Uh, even <laughs> even the last one he did with Trent Reznor. Oh my God, it just brings chills down your spine. It's actually a Trent Reznor song, but Johnny Cash is singing it. Oh, I'm butchering it because I'm blanking on the name. As usual, gee, that's a shock. Believe it or not, folks, when I'm not doing a podcast, I do this all day long. I could be literally in the bathroom, you know, reading, and a thought could come to my mind. I'm like, what was that called again? See, I'm good at it. No matter what. <laughs> well, this kind of went, I mean, I got passionate about stuff, but I mean, initially we were going to come in and we were going to try to make a music focused episode and we were going to, it was we were going to talk about, uh, album Skip. covers, vinyl covers, right? Yeah. Someday. No, oh, you want to take it into that? I say, um, how about we do that on our next episode? Leave okay. him hanging. Leave him I hanging. Know, I don't know if I can invite this moth to come with me next time. <laughs> <laughs> I say we do album covers on our next episode. Chris, thank you for having this idea. Thank you for sharing something that that uh, you're passionate about. Not that you're not passionate about the other things. I think uh, I other just than Kendrick Lamar, that fucker. Yeah, <laughs> I, um, I just killed him. <laughs> this podcast is. Basically, what's been going on generally with us, we're not typically this just in, did it, it, did it, it, or MTV News. God, I miss MTV News. Oh, I miss MTV News. I miss but, TRL. TRL, yeah. Hell, VH1 mm. Classics. Fuck. But, you know, this was something that's going on in Chris's world right now. He's passionate about it. And I'm quite sure if you do listen to our podcast, if that's a genre of music that you have been following to, please, by all means, Hit up Chris on the comment section. Down, well, he's going to respond to you, obviously, because he knows more about it. Or get on Discord. Talk to Chris about this on Discord. Hell the yeah. links are always in the description box. Dear Lord. I know we say this constantly, but that's a good avenue. I mean, I, you do the email thing. You know, because you could be you could be just as passionate about this or know something that Chris hasn't talked about. You guys can connect that way. Hell, even Chris's Instagram links, it's down there. So there you go. I'm not saying don't talk to me. You but, guys want to break down some bars? I'm here, man. Let's break down some fucking bars. That'd be fucking I, phenomenal right now. No, not bars. I'm just working on chords right now. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about the bars, man. Oh, the bars? Oh, yeah. Speaking of bars, I'll have to show you in the latest update on my uh the bar downstairs literally it's it's had a major update so well yeah it it looks more appropriate for my my style right now yeah it oh, does yeah. <laughs> well chris i think uh, you knocked this one out of the park and if there's any more you know updates if there's anything more trending about what you've been talking about here Please, by all means, you can hit it all up on another discussion as we meet each other down in the man caves once again. And, of course, follow us here or subscribe to us. I know I'm supposed to say that earlier, but I'm, I can't stand that when somebody like, Hi, yeah. my name's Bobby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. What is your fucking channel about? Yeah, that's pretty much like like putting the trailer out and saying, Please come see the movie. Some, come see the movie. Come see the movie. Mm -hmm. Come see the movie. But we've given you enough podcasts right now, so please fucking subscribe. Tickle that button. It smells pretty, and it's free. And, of oh. course, follow us over at Rumble, where I've been kind of lazy on not uploading the last couple. I'll, I'll get caught up. And if you if you cruise a lot to West Virginia like Chris or to Columbus, Ohio, or Cincinnati, or anywhere else in this great nation of ours, you can listen to us on your favorite podcasting app like I do. Yes, I listen to our own voices on Apple, Spotify, or wherever else you could find your favorite podcasting app. Isn't that right, Toby? 
Arp, arp. That's an old school BHA commercial. Nobody's going to get that. Maybe. You know what? I'll hit that fucking button. Yeah, just fuck it. Chris and I would like to thank you for watching or listening to Meet Us in the Man Cave. Since you enjoyed watching us, make sure that you tell all your friends and family to subscribe to Meet Us in the Man Cave here on YouTube. Make sure you click on that notification bell. That way you're notified on our next video podcast or live stream video. Better yet, if you appreciate freedom of speech and oppose of censorship for content creators, make sure you follow Meet Us in the Man Cave on Rumble. Are you on Discord? Well, Meet Us in the Man Cave's there. Come and hang out with us. You can find and follow Meet Us in the Man Cave on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads. And as always, you can listen and download Meet Us in the Man Cave on your favorite podcasting app. Available to stream or download so you can listen all you want, whenever you want. For more information, go to meetusinthemancave.podbean.com.